it's changed over the years, and I think it should, right? But it's changed over the years. Some people, it holds on. You go through these seasons of what drives you and what brings you and like the vision. Need to hydrate but tired of plain old water? You need Rebellious Infusions. No sugar, no calories, loaded with antioxidants to boost your immune system. And L-thionine for brain health. 10 organic flavors and convenient liquid packets. Just add 16 ounces and you are on your way. Rethink your drink at drinkrebellious.com. For 10% off of your next purchase, use the code 99999. It's changed over the years. And I think it should, right? But it's changed over the years. Some people, it holds on. You go through these seasons of what drives you and what brings you and like the vision transforms at different times. But early on, you know, when I was, when I got into football, what drove me honestly was praise from my coach. And so like when I, when I started in seventh grade, it was, it was going through some turmoil with my folks divorce and it's just what it is i'm not talking bad about them yeah they loved us they loved me and my brothers like crazy but it was a hard time for them yep. and so they handled it as best as they could right and so anyways but walking through that that's still a confusing and like weird and emotional time for where i was at, at as a kid at eight, eight nine ten eleven years old and so anyways when i got into seventh grade we're moving around a bunch and you know found football the first time i remember we were doing oklahoma drill and and coach just needed a running back so he yelled at me to get in there and so you know i'm this pudgy kid holding the football and i don't know why but for whatever reason i decided to go really hard and give a big effort on that play and i'm like i was just a kid learning how to work on the field right i never played football and so but i just decided to go hard and try to hit the guy well i i bowled him over before we went playing linebacker in oklahoma drill bowled him over and coach flipped out on me, like yelling and screaming, all excited because I just laid a hit on. Him. And that just threw an explosion into my head of endorphins, right? <laughs> of, of, of my yeah. receptors just going crazy. And all of a sudden I was like, whoa, I got all this praise for somebody from doing something good that was apparently good. And so I wanted more of that. And so, but that was, that was an initial driver for me in a big way. And, and so I wanted that praise from my coaches. And so you know, you tell me to be somewhere, I'm going to be there. So I became extremely coachable with all coaches love and busted my tongue was willing to go kill myself for somebody and almost to a, a big fault. And then, you know, over the years it shifted. So then I had this conditioning of, of a work ethic that I got from that, which was really big. And so then it was just, I kind of operated on this conditioning in a little bit, but then it started shifting over, especially when I got my faith to a confidence in knowing that I was set, set apart from the average person in this world. And so I love asking averages, right? So like what's, when I got into the financial business, I'm like, what's the average amount of study time to get licensed up? What's the average income level of somebody, uh, an advisor? What's the average revenue, like assets under management for a typical financial firm? And I started my own, right? So like what's the, what are these averages? Why do I ask what is average? Because average is pre pretty weak in this world. And so I know if I can get the average, I will smash that. And so whatever it is, and it doesn't matter if I'm, if I don't know what the field is, because that's just a language I just have to learn because I have an ability to learn, especially in the league, you have to interview with these teams or they want to get you down. When you're get, we get, when you're picked up on a football team in the NFL, you have to know the offense coach will come into you individually in a meeting and he'll drop, typically drop two or three plays. And you have to know all the calls, and everything that's going on with the play, if you don't, and he'll, he'll retest you the next day. And if you don't know 90 plus percent of those calls, basically ace the test, you're gone, you're cut. Mm -hmm. And so what I love sharing with guys is like, listen, we're conditioned to an ability to learn and transition the normal person isn't. Mm -hmm. And everybody has that ability, but we're conditioned mm -hmm. to it. And so if you realize that you're conditioned to it, I have a, a level of learning, I can attain information, way higher than the norm. And so I knew I could go after it. So that was a separated for me in a big way where like, no, hold up, I'm separated from the, the rest of the world. If you want to come to separate with me, come on, I'll show you how to do this. But I knew that confidence gave me a whole different uh, level of type of work when I was operating through something I was learning. So it was, I don't know if that makes sense, but 
That's awesome. I mean, first yeah. it's awesome. Like two things that a couple of things that really come out of it, right? I never thought about us being conditioned, but we are, right? We're being conditioned to adapt and learn all the time. And we know there's no comfort in athletics, right? Like the moment you're comfortable, watch out. Like nothing's good's right. gonna happen, right? So you get so used to being in discomfort, which I think again kind of talks to back to your correlation of special ops, military to athletes, right? You just get used to being discomfort, right? uncomfortable. I love that praise. I mean, tell kids all the time, like, what are you great at? Like, what's everyone admire you for? And we're all, I feel like we're all just a bunch of puppies, right? The, the moment we go out and we finally pee or poo on the lawn and everyone goes, oh, way to go, Max, you just great puppy. And the dog wags its tail and it's so excited. Like, thank you for loving me and thank you for just showing me this. I'll do this again. Watch, I'm going over by the tree right now. Right? Like, it's on. Like, I just need your praise. And man, we're still doing it, right? We're still doing it like the best in the world. Like, catch them doing it right again and again and they'll be like oh i'll do it right again man you see what you see? i just got the award for the top salesperson i got the bonus i got we're still doing the puppy it's just at a different level right whatever right. we get that praise and so many kids i feel like god's given them this great talent and i and it's really like a blessing right it's not hey listen you did something to get it necessarily like you take that pen and put it in your hand and all of a sudden that looks like this gorgeous picture which i absolutely admire because i can't do it <laughs> right i'm like yeah. oh my gosh look at that skill that's so beautiful look at the colors the shading i'm like and you're like 11 like i mean should you be in an art gallery somewhere and they're like oh yeah but i don't, I don't like to do it. i don't like to do it for other people like i'm like I don't know. Everybody loves this about you. They love what you do, the, what you create, the value, the beauty. And that's like, I, you know, I don't want to share it with others. I want to hold it to my own. And I'm like, no, like this is gift you've been blessed with. Like, go share it because that's what you're called to do. Right. And I never thought about coming back to this conditioned learning. It is the superpower of athletes that I think they miss when you talk about transitioning, and we could talk about this next year, you transition from NFL player to a wealth management company and owning your own firm and assets under management. You know, I have a few of those clients, so I love it. We talk a lot of AUM, right? You know, it's a superpower. You're a hyper learner. We can learn mm -hmm. things very fast and adapt very quickly. Like, And I don't need to actually do it either because I can watch the video and learn too. I've learned there's a lot of different ways to learn. And I've also learned those things that there's not just one way and I can learn different ways. I can go do it. Great. That's awesome. I can go watch it. Great. I can go get the video. Great. I can go in front of the coach and he can take me through it. Great. That's awesome. Like I can get the hacks and go faster. And I love that hyper learning. And I think that a lot of athletes miss this. Like this is going to be a superpower for you adjusting to quote unquote, the real world, right? The real world. So talk to me a little bit about that mm -hmm. and what you learned along that trial and do your own firm. About that adjustment, the transition period. Yeah. That hyper mm -hmm. learning. Yeah. That transition. What it does, one, like there's confidence. I don't want people to get that mixed up with cockiness either, right? Arrogance. Yeah. So, because I can be confident that I know I can get it done but don't be arrogant that you know everything. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's for one thing for sure. And you're probably in the same boat. It's like, the more I find out, the more I weaponize myself, the more I realize I don't know. And so yeah, that's right. I'm like, geez, it, it means I can start surrounding myself with more people that know. And so, but what started happening with me was a big thing started happening in my face was, you know, I knew I had the ability to work, learn, be where I was supposed to be. I could get the job done. I could perform higher than other people. And so I knew I had that capability. I didn't have the tools necessarily to get that done always. And so you might be in a different category. If I want to be in your category, I, in my mind, I knew I could get to where you were at or surpass somebody like that, but I didn't have, the, where would I find the tools or how would I find the capability, the information or the ability to get to there? And so football, I played it for so long that I wish I took over this kind of behavior before, but I learned this going through church was becoming that consumer where all of a sudden, because so many people are trying to pour from an, from an empty cup. You know, they say like, well, I can go play football until you get on the football field and they stop, right? I could open up my own wealth management company until you got to meet with a client and realize you're a big dope. So you don't know anything about it. And so the thing is, now you have to walk through these bad times, but most people are trying to pour from an empty cup with fake confidence. And so I have the ability to go get it. I have to go get it though. That's, and so what happened is in church is all of a sudden I became this consumer and started reading like crazy. 
And I know your your leadership guy, so you'll appreciate that's where I became a John Maxwell fan. Sure. Uh, his 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership and 13 Invaluable Laws of Growth. Awesome books. I started gaining some really core values to go after and then some practical behaviors that I could walk through in that. And so I, one book, I, so like I have a coach right now. I own my own financial firm and I have a coach still. That's because I guess the kind of the, the superpower that goes to it is realizing that your own you have to have vision, but realizing your your vision is finite. And so if I can like if I can find the right people, give me the right information to go carry through the right task, not waste a ton of my time, then I will get to destination from point A to point B 10 times faster than I ever would having to do it myself. And so like I still have to learn whatever it is, but like like an example, right? Like I started into this business out of the house and started doing really well. What started to happen is in this business, the average age is about 60 years old for any sort of uh, money manager. And so for every 10 that are retiring, three are replacing. And so we have a big wealth shift right now that's happening. So there's a lot of opportunity for these. There's a lot of older guys that don't know what to do with their book of business and their clients. And so they've just been doing everything themselves that they don't know what to do when they get to retirement place or this place where they want to slow down. And so I got approached for buying a book of business from this guy and he was 73 years old, still kicking. He wanted to keep working, but just wanted to pare it down a little bit. And it was cool because I, I, I'm just talking with him. I just want to hear his story and how he was in the business, been over 30 years in that business. And I'm like, man, tell me, you know, what were these catalyst moments that led to big growth for you or like bad ones that stick in your head really bad, big losses. And he just sat and sat, sat with me for, you know, over an hour talking to me about all these experiences. It was huge for me because... What it did was I talked to the buddy who hooked me up with him. I said, hey, man, he was a wholesaler through a company I used. And I, I just said, if you got any more of those guys who've just been around forever, I'd love to buy them lunch because what they have to offer is gold that I don't have. And so, well, he ended up hooking me up with a lady who sold her firm out of Dallas here like five or six years ago. And she became my coach. And has completely changed everything about my business in an amazing way. Well, it took my operation level from here to way up here. And so now my growth potential, you know, isn't this gradual climb. It's, a, it's taken a way steeper incline. And so, you know, that's where I've been able to do is realize I could couple my, my work habit with somebody who's been down the road farther than me. And that's hellacious combination right there. Well, I think it comes back and you, know, you talk about hyper learning and you always had coaches to help you hyper learn as an athlete, right? I tell a lot of people, we do own a coaching company, right? So I appreciate the props, bro. The best in the world have a coach right? Like they're the best in the world. Why would they need a coach? Like they outperform everybody, right? Like why would, oh, I'm so good. I don't need a coach anymore. Heck no, they know better. Like I need someone to keep me on the path. I need someone to catch my drift. I need someone to make sure that I'm doing it right each and every time and can give me great feedback and see through these things that I may be missing. And another lens of things. I mean, We've seen stories of history with athletes who are like, oh, yeah, you know what? I just finally, I just finally got rid of my coach and went from number two in the world to number 200. Like, it's crazy, right? The other thing I love is, is confidence. You know, you said that, like there's a confidence. And we know confidence and arrogance is a very fine line, right? It doesn't right. take much to cross that line. I find, and I tell a lot of people, confidence comes with preparation and repetition. And right. When we feel prepared, there's confidence in that. There's also what I think you really hit on, which is one of those big itties, right, is humility. Humility keeps you from arrogance. And when you're prepared, you realize, I could have spent another three days preparing. Like, there's still more to read. There's still more information. I don't know everything. I may have got to 80, 85%, and I feel like I got to go because I got to jump. But I also know that I don't know everything yet. And then the reps you find out too that I'm getting beat up here a little bit on the reps and maybe I'm not as ready as I thought I was. And this person's already got a thousand reps and I only got 10 and there's a reason I'm losing here. They've got the experience and I don't, I need to get those reps to feel more confident. And again, we're back into the humility. Like, Hey, doesn't matter how many reps you have. Sometimes you see someone with just talent and they're just going to beat you. They've got right. more. They've got something that you don't have. And so, hey, don't get too big, right? For your britches, it'll come back. So I love that, man. These are just gems, brother. So let us let me ask you a couple of questions because I want to be respectful of your time and the audience for sure. So you've had a lot of success, right? And won many games, right? Won many battles in your life. What's the best battle that you've ever conquered in your lifetime? 
of the best battle. I mean, there's, it's always kind of like an ongoing thing, right? Yep. I mean, it's, and I guess in my head, when I kind of threw that, those words like best battle you've won, it's almost like you're reaching this final moment and that you can rest. And like, there's, and I've never had that feeling where I can just, re- you know, I'll pass yeah. out because I'm tired. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> but there's never this final moment. Like I got this, but like, I guess wins that you feel good about in my life, probably, you know, obviously there's awesome wins in football, you know, football that was like Monday night football playing against the Eagles and us, it was a high flying scoring game against Donovan McNabb, Donovan, Donovan McNabb and uh, in Texas stadium and, and starting the game and having a lot of praise from coaches from playing well and doing some, I'm feeling like I played well and lots of different things like that was cool. But some of my, I guess, probably think about it, you know, more, in the stuff that I really care about. Like I care about mm-hmm. my business, but it's for my family, right? Yeah. So probably a battle that I love most is, you know, I talk about my marriage a lot because I come from a, a hard split, my yep. folks, and, yep. and they're both remarried and I love my mm-hmm. family. That was kind of a pain point for me. And so it ended up naturally being a highlight now in my days. And so there was some things that I've gotten through my consumption where it was basically like, uh, you know, one of my biggest talking points when I give a talk is, is know what you're about. There's most of the people in this world don't know anything, of, don't know what they're about at all. They have zero foundation to, find, to stand on. So when bad times come, they fall wind to anything that wants to blow them off the top. And so I tell people, I go, you need to pick three things minimum. Can't be, start with one. If you can't do three, start with one. But pick something in your life that is an absolute that you will not veer from if bad times were to show up. And so one thing, so a big win, I think for us or in my life is my family. So my wife and I, we made the commitment that divorce was never going to be on the table. And so and we both come from different backgrounds, but it's not an option. And so we've made this commitment ahead of time, knowing how stupid either one of us could be at, and make bad choices or say mean things or whatever, right? but that we're choosing our marriage and each other above anything bad that could ever take place. And so because we're making that choice as an active part of our lives, an active part of our foundation, that means we have to hold each other accountable to that. And we tell people, we've told our family, we've told friends to that. It's not there. And so if anything ever breathes into the conversation, you know, you got to be held accountable and held to that standard immediately. And so that's a big to me, I would call that a huge win because when we're both on the same page like that, we can start communicating in the same path. When we start talking in the same path, you start acting in the same path. And it's not perfect, but all of a sudden you guys actually start unifying in your marriage. And when you walk unified, two oxen can carry way more of a load than one, right? And two sure. oxen unified can carry twice the load, two oxen who aren't in, uni- in unison can carry. And so that ends up being a massive win because for us, the same thing, we can cover way, we can go way further in distance and way faster in time when we're walking in the same path with the same vision and the same goals. And so that's been a huge thing for us because I know a lot of people struggle in that and they just haven't found their ways for whatever reason. Yeah. They just don't know how, but and I'll encourage anybody here. Our faith has been massive catalyst for that. We both yeah. submit a big things in our life is our faith our family and our work. And so each one subjects itself to the next. My family is subject to my faith. Why? Because the first time I read, or first time I realized there was a God, I realized it was not him. And when I put my family above my work, that means I don't, and I have to check myself constantly on this. That means I don't exhaust my tank or I don't empty the tank at work. I got to leave some juice left for when I get home. And so I get, look, when I get home at 430 every day, it's a tornado with a six and a half year old and a 20 month old. Like these guys are tearing up the house. You know, usually at that time, my wife is like, you're She's ready to tap out, right? She's tapping <laughs> yeah. you in. I'm out, right? Like, yeah. I want to be at Starbucks for four hours. I just need a break. You know? <laughs> exactly. So I get that. Let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, the va- let's talk about the values that you're practicing and even developing along the way. Some of those values that, you know, maybe change the way you see things, the perspectives in your life. Talk about that, about how that shifted. That came in from my faith. Right? It was a lot. It was a lot of practical coaching, a lot of biblical perspective, and it was great because I mean we're all naturally searching for leadership. We're all naturally searching for somebody to guide us, and along with that, we are actually called to be a leader somehow in our life. Every one of us, it, it, no matter how big or small. And, and the thing was, is I love like I always like the coaches 
that knew exactly what they're about. I'm strong. We're going to be a strong, tough, pound the ball football team. This is what we're going to be about. And yeah. you find yourself sitting there nodding along with it, right? You're like, that's yeah. what I want to be. Yep. And, and so the people that don't have that in their lives go off. The, the first person who gets mad, who says anything like that, you know, like I'm going to go punch this guy in the face. I'm going to punch my boss in the face because he's a jerk and he didn't give me the raise that this other guy got. You know, other people who are lost, and they don't know any value in their life. They start nodding along with that. Like, I'm going to go with you. Let's punch them together. And it's, yeah. and all of a sudden it goes to a horrible place. And yeah. so like we have this natural inclination to be drawn to leadership or somebody who's convicted in a walking path. But if it's not in a place that is going to bring growth to your it's poison. So that's where church was to us. It's like God is calling you to a huge place in your life, but it's got to be in conjunction with him. And if it's not in conjunction with him, it's wrong. And I know that, you know, people can get upset when you just call them wrong. Nobody likes to be told they're wrong, but I, I can tell you from where I was at, my wife would have told you, she was like, well, when we got married, football was your number one. I knew I wasn't above that. And I was like, well, shoot. I remember at the time I'm like, no, babe, you know, that's not true. But looking back, yeah, absolutely was the way I mm. behaved. The actions. And people's actions are based on their beliefs, not by what they say. And I have to communicate, right? But, uh, and this is an extreme example, but if you ask a suicidal person, if, if, if they have people that love them, they say, well, yeah, absolutely. You know, people, people love me, but they don't believe it because mm. if they believed it, they would believe the value they bring to that other person. If I actually, I love you because, not because you bring something to me, but I love you because you're worth loving. And if you're worth loving, you're worth being here. And if you're worth being here, that means you have a calling on this earth. You have a purpose to be here. And so uh, all of a sudden, all these other trains of thoughts start coming down and, and that starts coming through in a big way. And I'm totally getting off track. I forgot where we're headed on this. No, this is good. This is wow. good. This is all about the values, right? I mean, this is the values yeah. that people getting that perspective. And I think yeah. it's great. I think it's perfect. So this has been awesome, Corey. I know we're, we're about almost at that hour mark. So I want to just say to everybody, hey, follow the show on YouTube Live. Many more videos on the Leadership channel. Um, I am on at uh, at Leadership on Instagram and Twitter, Trent M. Clark. Of course, my handles are Trent M. Clark or Leadership on all social media and YouTube. And our website is leadershipity.com. Look for our upcoming ebook, The Pyramid of Leadershipity, Accountability in Leadership. DM, email me. Let me know what you think of the show. I was excited, Corey, talk about you know hyper learning, the work ethic, all the things you talked about you could do that don't take all the skill, right? That you could learn, that you could all those things that you do as an athlete, right? I thought that was a great share, talking about confidence and the value of coaching. Just a lot of great things that we get overcome and who helps us overcome those things and talking about those people you surround yourself with as you go through trials. That's so huge. Um, if you enjoyed today's episode, please continue listening and rating winners find a way five stars. We work hard to find value delivering stories from 1% leaders for you. Every episode like today's Corey Proctor, Corey, tell them where they can find you. You can go check out any of my websites, CoreyProctor.com, ProCapitalTX.com, or you can see them on my, see on my social at Corey Proctor on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, come check me out. Always willing to talk. Happy to be here. Love it. Okay, so let's finish up with um, one thing. Um, is there anything that we did not cover that you'd like to share with someone? Someone, if they're struggling right now, they're going through a trial, things aren't great. Is there anything that you'd like to share that maybe we didn't cover that you'd give them uh, a point in the right direction, a nudge? Tell me about that. If you're not, I think there was a verse that you had asked for, and there's a Matthew verse. I was just looking up Matthew 9:37, but this has been on my mind a lot lately lately where the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, the laborers mm. are few. There's, and it's just Jesus talking in there. He's talking to his disciples that there is, more, but it translates into there is opportunity all over the place. There's very few people who are actually willing to go look for it and to go get it. And so what I've, if somebody's struggling out there, realize that you are supposed, you have an active part in this life to go make it better. And so if struggling or you're sitting in the wrong place or whatever, realize that you're, on, you're finite in your own vision. So you have to take a step to either pursue, find somebody who can give you different light, give you different perspective, or go read a book or get something to grow yourself enough to a place where some, that other person or that tough place in your life grows out. And so it doesn't have time or doesn't have space in your life all of a sudden because you're growing past it. And so I would encourage you guys to be consumers, to go read books, podcasts, go to church, man. Listen, I'm not here to be a Bible thumper. I still cuss and pray and 
in the same sentence. All right. But like, but I tell you what, but it wasn't until I started getting a supernatural presence in my life that I could realize I could do more than my natural self. And so do something that's above you, because if you don't do something that's above you, you're going to constantly stay in your own self, which is a selfish place to be. And you end up turning into a real narcissistic prick sometimes. And so get out of that place and start growing yourself past that and talking to people that have done some pretty amazing things in your life. And I promise you'll, you'll gain some gold that you never had. Yeah, I, I love the advice, too, about what you said earlier about finding, you know, I, I did Fun Story Friday this morning talking about you and I meeting, right, which is a part of our network and asking those people that you admire and respect. I actually get the same kind of juice that you talked about when you had that kid, when someone says, hey, Trent, I want you to meet somebody. You should meet this person, right? And that's exactly what Brian Morgan did. He said, hey, you, you got to meet Corey Proctor, Trent. And so we met, right? We got an invitation to meet. And so that always just and we're looking for people that will help us in this life. And Corey went out and he searched for those people that had come before him and had done some things. And he listened and gained that wealth of knowledge and wisdom that we so desire. So my quote, by the way, Corey, is I thought about, I like to think about our guests through the week, pray about it. And, you know, I pulled out one John 5, 4, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So I thought about that, like, man, this, you are in the middle of the world, right? Like the world says, oh, you're a hero, right? You're an NFL player. Everything's great for you. you got a beautiful house. you got the great family. You've run the world. You don't need any of that other stuff, right? But then you go, oh, I haven't overcome this world. Like I was, <laughs> I need some help. This isn't easy. And it, it may look easy for a minute and we get duped, right? Like we think yeah. like, oh, I got it. Oh no, I got this. I got this, Corey. And then it's like, you know what? You can't do this anymore. You need to go do something else. Like, no, oh, no, wait a minute. I got this. I said, <laughs> and it doesn't feel like that. Right. Right. Well, listen, man, it is uh wonderful to have you on for everyone. Thank you for joining us today on the winners find a way show. We'll see you next episode. It's going to be exciting. Look forward to that next time, every Friday, 1230 Eastern, 930 AM Pacific on leadership at a YouTube channel, LinkedIn live, Facebook live, and look for our podcast on all the major networks subscribe like us do it all and we'll see you next time need to hydrate but tired of plain old water you need rebellious infusions no sugar no calories loaded with antioxidants to boost your immune system and l-thionine for brain health 10 organic flavors and convenient liquid packets just add 16 ounces and you are on your way rethink your drink at drinkrebellious.com for 10 percent off of your next purchase use the code 999 Nine, nine. Thank you for listening to the Winners Find a Way show and podcast. Trent, together with the leaders who shared their learning and experiences through this show, are grateful for allowing them to help and support you on your journey to becoming your best. Write a review, rate us five stars, and share this episode to your network.